Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tax Advisor Biz Coach Success Podcast. I'm Liz Story, your host, and today I have an incredible guest joining me by the name of Erica Kastner. And welcome, Erica. How are you today? Good. How are you, Liz? Thanks so much for having me on the show. No, thank you for making the time to be with us today. And Erica, uh, first of all, I must say that she has an amazing background, but I'm going to leave that to her to share with the audience her expertise. Uh, but she's definitely a good business and marketing coach. So that's she's going to be able to help you, especially how to find quality clients faster. That's all what we want to do, right? We want to find clients that are going to be good targets, and we can hopefully get them into our business as soon as possible. So Erica, I'm moving forward this show to you. So tell us a little bit about your background, if you don't mind. Share with us your expertise and how you can help the audience that way they can understand, please. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks again for the opportunity, Liz. Yeah, so my background actually starts, um, it's interesting because for over two decades, I've been helping business owners and service providers find, connect, and convert more clients. And we were talking in the pre-chat, you know, about how important it is for especially service providers today to differentiate their, their niche and to really target that. Like, they might have a service that solves a problem for a lot of people or a lot of types of people but um where i where my gift to the world is if you will is really helping people understand like okay assuming that you know your niche and you know like the people you're after like in terms of who the type of clients you want let's now go talk to the people that are talking to those people let's build relationships with those people um because it's a lot easier i I always give this analogy liz it's always a lot easier to go out there and build relationships with five people that are talking to 20 of your ideal clients instead of you going out there pounding the pavement to get 100 clients right Mm -hmm. you see where the math can actually save you a lot of time so I'm sure we'll talk about that today and how I really got started in all of this was um, from my own pain point of being in, I started my career in the corporate retail space and then uh, about 10 years into my career path, I switched gears altogether. I got out of retail and went into the service space world and I was like, what am I supposed to do now? I'm used to you know, representing bigger brands that have these multi-million dollar budgets that are bringing clients into my storefront. I don't know how to talk to people where I have to go find them. (laughs) So it was like, it was like this total shift. And so through some of my, um, you know, scraping up my own knees, falling on my face, um, you know, doing what not to do, right? Um, Did you really? Did you went through that, Erica? (laughs) (laughs) Just a a tinge. Okay. A tinge, a lot. (laughs) A lot. But but yeah, I mean, it's... Honesty, honesty. Come on, we want to hear it. (laughs) Yeah, and you know, it really was. I mean, I was like, if you think about all the things that people, especially service providers and business owners do to go out there and try to drum up business and find their ideal clients by going to networking events or um, going to trade shows or, you know, going to conferences, like doing all the things that like are going to drive word of mouth referrals. I screwed all of that up in the beginning and then, you know, cr- yeah, created formulas to really help people um, master that. So, uh, so here I am today, flash forward into, you know, as we're recording this, it's 2018, um, you know, I'm coaching people. I'm blessed that I get to do it uh, not only in my own backyard in Florida, but I'm actually doing that on a national scale and even into some other parts of the world. Which is Congratulations. Really That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, and you know what? And, and uh, let's go a little bit back on uh, on that. Uh, uh, you know, um, subject you just brought up networking because I know that um, part of this, you know, discussion. Because like I said, I don't like to see episodes like being just interviews. Um, but I definitely think that you know how to find the quality clients faster. It's really crucial for any business because we can't stay in business. Well without money. I mean, that is a a reality. We need to have that cash flow continuously coming in. And as we lose some clients, which at the long term, we decide that if they're clients A, B, and C, as I call them, the Cs can go away really fast. Um, And I think we don't have a problem with that, right? We want people who are going to value and they're going to be able to um, respect us and they're going to pay us on time. Right. Mm -hmm. So finding the quality clients, it's it's crucial for any business. Networking. Let's talk a little bit about that. How do you feel? Again, uh, you know, in in, in 2018, as we are now, 
uh, that it, is it something that is still working word of mouth, making connections face to face, the you know handshake. I mean, how do you feel about that as an expert? I mean, does it still work? In other words, instead of versus to social media that we're doing right now. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, Liz. Every connection that you have online. So, I mean, there's there's obviously a lot of ways we can conduct business. Thank goodness for technology, right? Because you and I are talking via technology, and, and we can. And um, our networks, you know, because now I get exposed to your network, you get exposed to my network because we're doing this and we're recording it, right? Absolutely, though, the, the foundation of every transaction that happens online, there's a person behind it. So if we, you know, and but but here's the thing. I mean, there's a lot of icky things that go with networking. Like, you know, a lot of introverted people just are like freaking out about it. But even like extroverts like me, <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't like some of the networking practices that are out there. So I think what I want to make sure that what we cover today in, in, in a really specific way is that, you know, it's the, it's how you're networking. It's, it's like the, like who you're building the relationships with, because like, like as much as, um, as much as the, you know, our, our lovely audience is watching our show today, as much as they're trying to drive quality clients to their business, the start of that is having quality people in their network that are driving those referrals in. So I if you're not agree. aligning your, yeah, if you're not aligning yourself with quality people, and we just said this in the in the pre chat, right? You're like, look, I'm really picky about who I invite on my show. I want to make sure that it's the highest quality of value, and I and I'm very honored to be here, right? My pleasure, it really is, Erica, because I know, I know you're going to bring the good value to, to the show. And again, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I wish you're, and I kind of jump in and, and do this quite often, by the way. That's right. Okay, we're just, we're just two girlfriends having a convo, right? Oh, there we go. Woo Anyhow, so I remember when I started my business, of course, I mean, the old fashioned way of doing things. Uh, was to go to chambers, right, and uh, business, you know, groups where you had events and, you know, the handshake and the eye contact. And But you know what? I realized at least in the last two years I have cut down a lot of doing that. And, and I know deep in my beliefs, okay, and I'm here not to convince anyone, deep in my beliefs, I still think that the true connection of meeting someone in person, it's different. It's a very different relationship that you can build that person. Because as humans, we're, we, we, we want to feel that energy, that connection with that other person, okay, that expressions or their face, right, their energy. So do you think that a mixture of social media and still in-person networking, it's a good mix? Or do you think like the networking, because it seems like networking chambers are dying out. I mean, oh, okay. that's my yeah. impression. <laughs> I'm dying over here. I want to jump in like so many times. Okay, so here's what's funny. I actually used to work for a chamber of commerce. Okay, I, I, I so uh -oh. I, I yeah, and, and I'm and so like this is this is beautiful that this is coming up right now because for a lot of years I was under that um, and you know like for the last two or three years of my tenure with the chamber, the attitude within our organization was all about helping our members stay because what was happening was, you know, especially like in 2008, 2009, when social media started to really take off, um, you know, we were, we were losing members as fast as they were coming in. So we would get all these members, spend all this time getting new clients, and then we weren't able to get them to sign for another year with us. And that's hard. And so if you if, as you're listening to this today, folks, you know, thinking about your own business, the retention aspect, it's a lot harder for you to go out there and earn new business as opposed to like earning repeat business or referral based business. So what I say to that is, um, you know, my, my beliefs now, um, and they were like that last two or three years before I launched my company, it is not about like everybody going to every single event. I agree that you do have to go out there clients. Well, you could start by networking with business attorneys. You could start by networking with um, insurance agents. Like, so where are those people hanging out? You know, like go to the bar association and do some networking there. Like stop going to the after five events where there's like a smorgasbord of like sales professionals and nothing against sales professionals, right? But like, that's not where your target market's hanging out. Your C-level executive is not hanging out at an after five event. So if that's who you're trying to attract, 
Mm-hmm. Go find out where they're hanging out. And that's my, that's my soapbox moment on that. <laughs> no, and thank you for that, Erica. And you know what? I, I totally agree with you um, in that sense because, like I said, I had to learn the hard way. And, and like I said, again, I don't mind sharing, you know, the good and the bad of all my experiences that I've been through through all the years that I, I've been on my, you know, pretty much it's been, what, like eight years now. Um, so, and I really believe that you have to be very constructive with your time, right? We know that time is precious um, and it's priceless. And we don't realize that when we, we, we're making the time and spending money because we're still spending money. Just the fact that you're going into your car and driving your car to make it to one of these events, you're already spending gas, wearing and tearing your car, uh, eating women uh, makeup, you know, uh, and, and things like that. And then now you spend there maybe at least, you know, maybe two hours in the event. So it's not about picking up, and we talked about this and many other things people have heard, picking up business cards. It's about building relationship. Instead of you know, taking 10 business cards with you, take three, three that it was value at somehow that might be a good connection to you. So anyhow, my point is that I feel that in the last two years, I'm very straightforward. I mean, I, I only stay with my local chamber and I stay with another group and it happened to be that that business group just dissolved just, you know, uh, not too long ago. And I feel like I'm hesitating. Is it worth for me to jump again and go to another, you know, uh, join another group? Or not because I really honestly did not get that much of a result. But unlike what you're bringing up, saying instead of just going to one of these broad, you know, uh, kind of chambers and events, find your niche and go where the niche is and build a relationship within that circle. Right. Yeah. And you, you hit the nail on the head, Liz, because it's really truly about like assuming that everybody watching this or listening to this today knows their niche. Now it's a matter of then saying, okay, I know the client I want to serve. Now, what are the five? Like the Because it happens. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think early on, um, so I've now been on my own uh, for the last four years. So, you know, I've been, I've been doing some work, for, you know, like in this capacity with helping service providers and business owners find, connect, and convert clients for, you know, over two decades. Um, but for myself and my, in my world, um, you know, since 2015, the biggest mistakes that I, I made moving like into my business was assuming that everything was at my disposal online. Like I, it was like, like I, I wanted to separate myself so much from like my past, you know, I wanted to create like this division line Mm -hmm. and instead of maintaining those relationships and letting educating people and letting them know like how I could help them and how they could in turn help refer me or, you know, point me in the right direction. Like I, I was like, Oh, I'm not doing any of that. I'm going to go build my business online. And it was like, it took me a good six months to kind of figure out that that was not the way to do it. And in that process, I lost a lot of traction, you know, like I had relationships that I had, you know, spent a lot of time building. And because I assumed that they knew what was in my brain and they knew what my, you know, my new goals were, um, you know, a lot of that fell by the wayside. So it took me again, probably another year. Um, you know, so like I, I, I stopped doing it for six months, right? But it took me about a year, I would say maybe 14 months to get back on track. Uh-huh. And that's what's, it's so devastating. You talk about time earlier, Liz, right? You know, what's so finite. Right. So, you know, I, I think, you know, the lesson that I want people to really kind of walk away from this, this, this part of our chat is, you know, like consistency pays and don't assume that everybody knows exactly what you do. Like, you know, be out there. It's not self-serving if you're talking about you and your service, right? But you do have to continuously feed that, um, that message. You've got to put that out there. And the minute you drop the ball on it, the, the minute you get relaxed because now all of a sudden you have clients and you're good to go and, you know, everything's great. Um, the minute you take the, 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 the foot off the pedal with that, it's, it can be devastating in terms of getting back on track with it. It's going to take you sometimes twice as longer, if not longer, to get back on track with filling your pipeline. So, so true. I yeah. agree with you on that one. I do. I think it's the funnel, right? We have to keep going that flow and the funnel come <laughs> going yeah. in. And yeah. it doesn't matter because, again, in, in depending uh, as we expand, then we can also hire other, you know, team members to help out in the process. So I used to tell people, you know, don't, don't limit yourself, even if you're solo, because the reality is that you have so much potential. 
And just because you cannot directly serve every single client doesn't mean you have to stop. And you can just limit yourself and say, oh, well, I can only handle 10 clients a month, for example. Okay, but what about if you have 100 more out there who really need your services and they need to tap into your brain because you have that expertise, then you hire more people. And you train them. That way you can help more people out there. So I think it's very important, especially for the solo entrepreneurs, to understand that even if you're only one single person, we need to hire sometimes to be able to expand. Mm -hmm. And due diligence and knowing how to let go, of not having the control of thinking that we can run it all, I think it's very crucial in the business. Yeah, and you touch on a very good point because I think that for a lot of people who are um, feeling a little like payroll poor, you know, they're like, oh, I don't, you know, I need to hire somebody, but I don't know if I can, you know, if I can budget for that, you know, right now and sustain that. And maybe they might be able to do it for a few months, but they they can't they can't see it now that they can sustain it for the future. All the more reason why your your strategic partnerships are important because again. If you're focusing on the things that you truly want to do, then you can refer some of that other stuff out. Like in and and in some ways you can get maybe a referral fee. Like it, it doesn't always happen. You know, like some some industries are highly regulated and they can't accept those things, and I get that. That's but, fine. but but think creatively, you know, think like, okay. I, 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 can't, I can't personally, you know, like if this is your situation, budget for that now. However, if I just aligned with somebody that could take this piece of my business, you know, off my plate so I can focus on this other stuff that's going to make me more profitable, make me more happy, make me more whatever, um, then that's a good thing because you're helping somebody else build their business and you're doing the things that you want to do. So that's another way to kind of leverage um, other strategic partners, especially if you feel like you don't have a budget <laughs> for a yeah, full-time person. Listen, I, I, I'm with you with that because it's true. Like you said, maybe you don't have the budget to hire an employee full-time or even part-time, but it doesn't matter. There's so many other companies out there that you can outsource their services to help you out, right? Um, and, and, and that's one of the beauty of it. And not only you're helping the economy, but you're expanding your business even though you're only one single person. Yeah, and you're helping a lot more people that way. You know, you're helping a lot more people, and it might not be like tens of thousands of people, but your your impact as a service provider or a business owner is going to be far reached because you're you're thinking on a different scale. Mm. So I have another question for you, okay, Erica? Because here's the thing: these are very specific questions that I think the audience, if they could, they will probably ask you. Mm -hmm. um, so, what is a critical? What is critical to get right to running the business and to avoid? wasting money and time because we talked about before we start doing the recording that again time is precious and priceless right yeah. so what are the little things that you can some tips that maybe you can share with us that perhaps they can avoid especially new startups yeah okay well I, I think what's what's fascinating and this is kind of a double-edged sword when I talk about this but um, I'll, I'll try to condense it into a nice tight sound bite for people to get um, it's really truly about having an intentional plan. And what I mean by that is that, you know, like, yes, as much as I love the concept of writing, like I have a bunch of these like 79 cent notebooks that I get at, you know, the drugstore. I have I, so my, my, my lovely <laughs> gift daughter, she's my lovely gift daughter. She's like a senior in high school. Mine is blank. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have well, to spare the day. <laughs> Well, I have, you should see my, if I could show you, if I could pan over to the other side of my office right now, I'd show you my bookshelf of all of my notebooks. And the reason why I say that is because I'm constantly planning ahead. I'm constantly thinking about like the trajectory of my business and like the other things around my business. It's not just solely my business, but like how does that impact other areas of my life? So I think if, if, if the one thing I could share today is if, if, if our listeners, especially our startups or those people that have been in business but they want to take it to the next level, that's right. is you take the first 20 minutes of your day, and I'm not talking the first 20 minutes of your business day because the second you get to the office, it's like all hell breaks loose, right? You know, it's like the, the notifications and then this and then that. Your first 20 minutes of your morning, mm -hmm. and you start getting really, in, it's three parts. Write down what's the one thing that you want to accomplish for the day. One, not 27, but what's the one thing that's going to move the needle. 
um, where are you at in a place of gratitude for where you're at? And sometimes this is really challenging if you're like feeling like you're on top of, um, you know, a lot of um, things that are out of your control, right? You know, if you're swimming in, you know, maybe some extra debt that you're not, you know, you weren't anticipating or, um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to see, uh, you know, any moments of gratitude in that. But I always write that down in the morning because it's part of my plan, right? And then I commit to two action steps that I'm taking that's going to roll out or that's going to help me roll out my intention for that day. So I, I hate to generalize it because it sounds like it's so lofty, but it's like I've committed to that exercise for the last four years of my business. And I move the needle every time we do it. It's a very simple thing for people to do. When you can do that one little 20 minute exercise in the morning, write down your intention, write down one statement of gratitude and two action steps that you're going to take that day to move you forward. It, it's like those little wins over time end up being crazy. Like you look back 90 days from now, if you're committed to it, right? You could look back 90 days from now and say, holy cow, I did that, you know, because I committed to two little action steps a day. Um, I really agree with you, Erica. I do. And you know what? And I hate to interrupt you, but, you know, I, I, I do believe that, you know, there has to be certain um, systems, yeah. I call them system uh, in place for things to move forward. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, I do. I show you my blank page, but uh, if I go through the entire notebook I'm like you know, I, I have notes and notes and I'm honest enough to look at and you, and you highlight I don't even highlight stuff I highlight I <laughs> underline and I don't know they say it's good for your brain or whatever it is and I, I write down things and what's yellow that means I have to go back and and you know uh, finalize it and it's true I think that uh, for me what I have one what has worked for me is being able to focus on the things that are going to be very exhausting so I like starting my day again with gratitude. I actually, I'm, I'm not going to be shy about this and, and I'm very open about it. Beyond religion, I, I have a great faith in God. I do this universe that we all live in and I believe that law of attraction and I believe we have to have gratitude as we start our day because for some reason we are still here. And there's a purpose for us to be here. And what's important is a lot of times I feel like entrepreneurs whether they are afraid of coming out of the comfort zone because of how they're going to be criticized, whether they're going to do it perfect as they think the society wants it, which is not true, um, and what they can truly offer. And the reality is that, you know, the longer you stay in your comfort zone, the less you can help people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and again, like, you know, that is like, I used to think like, you know, that little exercise that just rattled off. I used to think that that was really woo -wee. you know, like I, I'm like a very, um, you know, black and white kind of a girl. I like to have fun, but like, I just, you know, I look at things, you know, linear now, obviously I look at the big picture. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trained to do it because I've, I've allowed myself to train ready to actually accept awesome growth for your business. Probably not. Like, will it happen? It can, but are you going to be ready to sustain it? And that's a totally different thing. So um, I always suggest to people, you know, take that little moment, your 20 minutes a day to be very self-reflective. It's amazing what you end up writing down on paper because, like, your brain is in a place of, like, oh, I could do this, and I dreamt about this. And it you have clarity in the morning. When you wake up, your mind is rested. Uh, you don't, you're not, you know, you're not overwhelmed yet. <laughs> so it's a great time, and I agree with you, Erica. And I think these are really good tips for, for in general, for people to hopefully, you know, uh, you know, implement, right? Because yeah. again, I always say to, to to the public, we can give you a lot of tips, a lot of tools, and things for you to apply. But if you're not willing to, guess what? Not that I'm, you know, nothing's going to change. So yeah. I think that's important for people to realize when you listen to the podcast that. It's just small little steps that we can do, and it can drastically change a mindset. Yeah. Have you read the book, not to cut you off, have you read that book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy? No, I have not. Oh, honestly. yeah, that's Always. a good book. It's a quick read, too. So um, okay. that really kind of talks about, and he talks about it on a, a number of fronts. You know, he's talking about fitness, he talks about business, and he kind of gives a high-level view. But the concept is, is it, you know, it can repeat, but it's called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It's a quick read. It's awesome. I listen to it um, probably every 90 days just to kind of get a fresher. <laughs> yeah, no, that's excellent. Thanks for sharing that with us. You know, I, I, what would you feel like is the best way 
to advise someone who's struggling to whether, you know, move on, like I said, with the business, um, you know, they're hesitating, they're probably feeling insecure uh, because as humans, I mean, we all have problems, we all have issues, come on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the reality of life. All we can do is move forward and, and, and believe in ourselves that we can have room for improvement mm -hmm. and we learn from each other as I'm learning from you and I have learned from so many other people in my past and hopefully I will move forward move from the people in the, you know, in the future. Um, what things can you tell someone who's struggling right now and saying, goodness, what should I do? Okay, so here's the, here's the, the million dollar question of the day or the million dollar oh. answer of the day. Go Stop for it. thinking about what can I do. Start thinking about who can help me. And when you start thinking about the people that can help you get out of, like, I'm going to be really transparent for a minute. My husband and I, um, you know, there's a there's a little bit of a challenge going on in our world right now, not relationship wise, but just like a, like something we're trying to figure out. Oh. And neither one of us are skilled at like being able to figure that out. And so the other day was so funny. It's Fourth of July. It was you know we're recording this just shortly after Fourth of July. That's right. It was Fourth of July. We're watching the fireworks, and he says, "You know what? Like it's about time that we like take a dose of our own medicine and start getting support outside of us." So like so if you're struggling right now, the listeners, if you're if you're struggling with something right now. That problem, whatever you're trying to solve right now, has been solved before in another industry by another person, like um, by you know somebody that's 20 years ahead of the game. So <laughs> go seek that out. I mean, like don't be afraid to ask for support because I think when when we start like being afraid of that or we don't because we want you know we're, we don't want our pride to get bruised um you know we don't want to appear needy like that's the minute that like stuff starts falling apart in a huge way and then sometimes you can't pull yourself out of that mess so um so stop asking how can i fix this start saying who can help me and the minute you start asking that question your brain again you know, that could be another morning and intentional activity you do you start saying you know what like i know you know, so and so, they can they can help me with that. Or I, you know, I don't know this person personally, but I know that person has a reputation to you know do X Y Z. You might have to pay that person something to make it happen, <laughs> okay? But like, what's the cost of like not doing anything about it? What's the cost of you trying to figure it out yourself? So if you start getting aligned with other people that can help you, and you know what? Sometimes it's just a matter of talking to somebody, talking that through. I know for a lot of online entrepreneurs, you know, people that are really just behind their computer building their business online, um, there's, there's iso you know, they feel isolated. They feel like nobody is in that boat. But I can guarantee flip into you, Liz and I are living proof. You know, like that's right. We've had failures, but we're here. And we still live to tell about it, and we'll probably have more failures. Sorry, Liz, I don't mean to be a bummer. <gasps> I know, not? right? I don't want to. That's a very negative. Very good. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who, me? What are you talking about? No, but, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> the hair flip too. But we are, and that's just that. That's like that's like the you know. Um, again, we just have to get outside of our own self and say, "Who can help us? Who can help us solve that?" And you know what? I have to admit that that's an amazing, amazing tip. Um, I I think sometimes we just um, kind of you know stay in a circle and. We need to realize that, like you said, there's so much support out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people who have been through those circumstances way before you even got there. And why not reach out and hire the best? I always say that. I, I'm a firm believer of always hiring whoever has more knowledge and more expertise than I do. And I tell people, just because I crunch numbers for a living, which, yes, I still enjoy, and, you know, I do tax advisory, my business, things like that. But still, I'm still learning. I'm still growing as a person. And when I don't know, I'm willing to find out and research their information. But guess what? There's nothing better when you can create a group or circle, as we call the inner circle that you've been hearing a lot out there, of people that are there to support you. And, yes, you have to invest in yourself. You did it with your career. There's no difference. You went to college, and if you didn't, you're learning one way or another, so you're investing money and time. We talk about time, right? Yeah. So I think it's important that we all try to support each other 
And, you know, I hope someday we can create some sort of really, like, nice big group of mentoring, you know, and really help each other in different aspects because you have your own expertise when it comes to your marketing and things like that, right, Erica? Yeah. Other people have more, you know, other expertise maybe what has to do with many other topics. But in joining that group together where people feel comfortable that they can go in and say, hey, I have a question and I cannot figure it out. I just don't know the answer because it's not there. Right. right or it's hidden you know like it might be buried under a bunch of other like limiting beliefs and again not to get all wooby about this but it's wow. like you know really just truly understanding that we all have this like we all have these like like these pattern loops that kind of go off in your brain and it's Insecurity. like if you're, we have yeah, and so you know your ideas about whatever like the, the reason why you do what you do right that's a belief that was like instilled in you like way before you even decided you were going to go do whatever you do as a career or the relationships that you form so just having that sense of like getting outside of um, your own brain and, and and empowering yourself to go build relationships with other people and how to circle this back list because you said something and it inspired me to, to say this thought you know, like everybody, especially in the service-based world, is trying to, like we're a dime a dozen, right? I mean, like you and I do some coaching respectively, newsflash, it's a ton of other coaches out there, right? How do we differentiate ourselves? You know, if you're a tax advisor, if you're an attorney, if you're in a, like whatever you are, there's other people that are doing what you're doing. If you want to stand out, how you stand out is through your network, you know, through the, the, the like I, I, am, I stand out because people know I'm the go-to resource for just about anything in the immediate selfless Florida area. I'm building that beyond the selfless Florida boundary, but I built that reputation first and foremost. So uh, another lesson for any of our listeners today, you know, go out there, build relationships with other people, get ideas about how you can grow, but then go into those partnerships and say, you know what, like, what is everybody else doing? Like, I, I could hold the key to the city, <laughs> metaphorically, if I just took some time to get to know people around me sure. and connect people. Like, you know, honestly, connect other service providers with other service providers because they want to do business with each other, probably. Um, so be a value, be a service, and, and connect the dots for people. You'll learn a lot in the process. Thank you so much, Erica. I really appreciate it. And now uh, we're almost ready to wrap up here the, the, the episode, but I will say something. Uh, you know, I do appreciate all the value that, that you have brought to the show. And, uh, you. you know, again, right now, if the audience needs to reach you, but how can they contact you? Perhaps your website, your information, anything that you have. Do you have any um, master classes or things that you're doing online to help new entrepreneurs or like I said, existing ones that they can come and reach out to you and, and see what kind of service and programs you might be able to offer? Yeah, uh, so I have a number of things going on. I think just to simplify things, because that could re that could go on and on. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think. That, 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 <laughs> and I want to give people a clear path. So um, the Please. the easiest way to probably connect with me is to visit thequeenofresults.com. And if you put a forward slash and tack on free guides, so if you do the queen of results forward, oh, sorry, the queen of results.com forward slash free guide. Um, when you sign up for my email list there, you're actually going to get a, a free download to getting eight ways to grow your word of mouth referrals. So there's oh. eight little tips on there. Um, we talked about a couple of them today, but there's a few other ones on there that are really poignant and they can make all the difference in, in between having just an okay year to having a really awesome year. So you might want to go check that out over at thequeenofresults.com forward slash free guide. Simple. <laughs> right. Thank you, Erica. Really appreciate your time and your tips. And now, uh, hopefully, we stay connected. And now, uh, who knows? Uh, even create, you know, different kind of marketing videos to help, you know, business owners out there. Because uh, definitely, I think that's a lot of confusion. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, listen to this kind of podcast can really help have more clarity and, and understand what's the right path for each one of us. Uh, but definitely, I think this was a phenomenal uh, topic to discuss. So I hope people take action um, and move forward. And, and I wish everyone a lot of success. And, and once again, Erica, thank you. Thank you so much. And until the next time, I will see you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.